Jasmine rice is a fragrant, long grain white rice grown throughout Thailand, Vietnam and Cambodia and jasmine is essentially the name of a rice variety that can be sold around the world under any brand name without any specific requirements. This means that there's a huge range of quality across brands and origins. If you don't live in a country that produces rice locally, the best exported jasmine rice, in my opinion, comes from Thailand and is often labelled as Thai homali rice. In order for the rice to carry that label, it needs to meet a certain set of standards regarding kernel size, moisture content and amylose content. Breaking it down further, there are also different grades available under the Thai homali rice category. The highest export quality is labelled AAA grade and to achieve this rating, it must contain a purity of above 92% of Thai homali rice. Although it is still commonly used, the term AAA belongs to the old grading system from the 60s and the 70s and it has been replaced by the term premium for some newer brands. Below that is the rice that is labelled as A1 Extra Super which contains a purity of 80% Thai homemade rice. And anything labelled plainly as Thai jasmine rice only needs a purity of 60 to 80%. The only thing you need to cook rice with is water and the amount of water to use depends on a few factors. If you do not rinse your rice before cooking, the ratio of uncooked rice to water is 1 to 1.25. This is measured in volume and not weight. What this means is that for every one part of rice, you will use one and one quarter part of water. However, I strongly recommend that you rinse your uncooked rice until the water is almost clear and no longer murky. Some people think that rinsing the rice will make it more fluffy, but that's just an old myth. The truth is that rinsing your rice removes the excess starch, which leaves your rice grains more separated and not gummy after cooking. If you follow my recommendation to wash your rice and you cook it immediately without soaking your rice, then remove 5% of water using a ratio of 1.2 parts of water to one part rice. However, make sure that your rice is properly strained after washing so there is no leftover water that will alter the water to rice ratio that you're going for. Finally, if you have washed your rice and you have time to soak your rice, the ratio of water to rice can be reduced to 1 is to 1. That's 1 part water to 1 part rice. Washing and soaking your rice before cooking is by far the best option and I highly recommend that you add these steps. Soaking the rice allows the grains to absorb some water which results in the cooked rice being more tender without being mushy and the rice also cooks more evenly. It also prevents the grains from breaking during the cooking process. You can see the direct comparison here of how much water the rice has absorbed after soaking for about 30 minutes. After washing and soaking your rice, properly strain your rice and place it in a wide heavy bottom pot and add an equal part of water. If you have a fitting lid, use it but if not, cover the pot tightly with aluminum foil ensuring that most gaps are sealed off. You can also put a plate over the top because what we're trying to do is to prevent the steam from escaping during the cooking process. Turn on to the highest possible heat and bring the water to a boil as fast as possible. If you're using a see-through lid, it is quite obvious when the water starts to boil. But if you're using foil to cover your pot, you will know that it is boiling when you start to see steam escaping from the sides. Reduce the heat to low and leave the rice to steam for 12 minutes. When the 12 minutes is up, turn off the heat and allow it to steam untouched for another 10 minutes. After allowing it to stand for the additional 10 minutes, you can now finally open the lid or foil. Your rice should be perfectly cooked but there's still one more essential step. You need to fluff the rice. To do this, you can use a fork or a rice paddle to gently separate the grains to prevent them from sticking to each other and getting mushy. Also, fluffing your rice will allow any excess steam and moisture that was trapped in the compact rice to escape so your rice does not overcook. Now that you know how to cook jasmine rice perfectly, you can add flavour to it any way you like. Till next time folks, cheers! Thank you.